remember light? You remember heat? How couldn't you? It's all you ever know. Your mind is blank noise, quite nothing, telling through chaos. Years, centuries, and at once it fails. The light withdraws and the roar around you turns to a fading howl. So, you're somewhere new, someplace cool and dark. Dead wetness coats your face. You have a face? Are we not supposed to have a face? You have a nose and arms and legs. And, oh, you guys are thinking. Thoughts flood your skull, pictures and words and pain. You push yourself to your knees and clap your hands across your face. It hums in agony, the pain of hitting something hard face first. If you dare to open your eyes, you can see what? Stone. Cobblestone Street. Through the fresh tears in your eyes, you slowly study your surroundings. Not quite a street, but an alley. Warm lanterns line the close, the close buildings, stretching long into the passage, darkened depths. The pain fades enough to move. You stand barely. Something slides off of your shoulders as you do, but right now you can hardly care. You have no idea where you are. Or who you are. It's your first coherent thought. Who are you? What's your name? Before brows, you manage to recall the name Charlie. And nothing else. Any other memories you might have once carried are just things. I have flashes. Broken. You sense standing here is going to help you remember. Instead, you press forward to the end of the alley. There you can see a light. Smooth, silvery light. Down the small slivers dance below. Water. You remember what it is, at least. As you climb out of the alley, you realize you're near some kind of pier. Nearby ships bob in the water, creaking and groaning as the seawater cradles their wooden bodies. Your eyes trail up to the night's source of light. The moon. Some pieces. A gray scar lays carved across its equator. Smaller pieces hanging silently near the broken core in the heavens. Or someone shared that this is normal. Hello, fishy fishy. A voice that crawls out of the darkness, rough and taunting. You spin towards it and in your haste nearly topple over. A gray shadow creeps towards you and with another dropping step it falls into the dim light of the lanterns. It's massive. A fully head a full head over you. It stands high and mighty in the moonlight with smooth black skin. Your body glistens with a wetness of its own. Like stones under falls, slick and sheen, the white spots near their black eyes draw your memory. An orca? Okay. Your eyes focus and you take in the rest of him, a particularly big orca with a tail thick as log trailing behind them and a great fin on top of his wide head. It flops slightly, rings to gold pierce along its rim. The smile close to his face is not a kind smile. He approached you with a hard intent. Crack at his knuckles, you begin to count his sharp teeth. You deaf? He asks you. Or are you just stunned by the sight of a handsome pirate? Don't blame ye. Your eyes filter down his chest. He has no shirt to speak of, leaving his glossy skin open to the night air. He's cut like a statue, abs like marble, the arms built for breaking boulders. Your eyes wander just a bit more down to his pants bound in a black sash and golden buckle. What the hell? We just started. We don't even know who we are, and we're getting approached by a giant orca pirate. Raise a finger and beckons you. Don't be like that, fishy fishy. Let me put it this way. You can flop into me. Net or I can rear you in. What's it gonna be? The hell? Your head's still spinning, your muscles ache, your stomach is near well, somewhere else entirely. But you can still fight, probably. Where's your fist? You're ready for a brawl. Probably not. I was just run. What the hell? Uh what the hell. The work is too strong, obviously. For the final punch, he knocks you flat on your back and throws his hands around your throat and holds you high into the air. Your oil pours out of his mouth, shining like glass in the lantern light. You really think you can fight down, Donan? 
He taunts and shakes his head with a chuckle. How quaint like. When his hand reaches up to the loose fabrics around your shoulders, he grips it straight off of your body without pause and holds up the fabric to your face. Even in the darkness, you can see the color in it. Color stained by burns and tears. And what's this orientness you're wearing? Asked the pirate. He shrugs and tugs the rest of your clothes straight off your body. He weighs them up with one hand and throws them over his shoulder. They dunk into the harbor and his hand presses down to your belly so they glee. What the hell? Astro's strong hands wander down your skin. A new voice calls out in the dark. You for the save us. Over the stop, he stopped dead in his lustful expression and speaking towards the pure annoyance. He halfway turns his head to the voice. Could you come back in half hour like? A bit busy. I will not, Donathan Dane. That gets his attention. Keeps his grip around your neck, ironclad, as he swivels his neck fully to the voice's source. It's don't end to you. And you know it. You see he's who he's shouting at, a dark figure clad in armor, by flowing fabric trailing off to her belt and shoulders like a ghostly sheets. A dragon. Somehow you remember the horns and tail give them away. Even in the dark you see their yellow slit eyes glare in the head. Even greater are the wings behind her back, tucked nearly against their shoulders. The knightly dragon draws a mean sword. Let them go. A flash recognition rolls over the orca's eyes. Okay. Um, think Sarah Gilbert, and where's the old man? Gonna get tired of guarding nothing. They're under near, they're turred by orca's taunts, and raise their sword to fighting stands. Let them go without a dinner else. Okay, the orca spits on the ground. Or else what? Suddenly a fell light booms overhead. You all glance up to see the heavens filled with clouds, moving as if alive faster than clouds could possibly move. They turn like the sea, flashes of blue and purple broiling inside wispy columns. They are booms with distant roars of thunder, but they sound wrong. Angry. Your gut churns as the sound reaches your ears. You're looking at something you shouldn't. The orca's grip around your throat loosens. He mutters out. Disappointment clear in his voice. Oh damn. Man in the storm. It's also you onto the stones without a second thought. The ball fists he gives only a parting glare. You got lucky, fishy fishy, remember that. He stomps off, then jaws as the corrupted lightning overhead begins to flash with light obscene down on the ground, staring up at this rage of the heavens. You're looking at it, straights your eyes. A small relief comes with the dragon pops into your vision, eyes full of concern. All right, Sir Gilbert. He shouts and waves a claw in front of your face. Are you well, sir? You reply to the paragon of eloquence. Okay. You realize you don't remember how to talk. Or at this point, stay awake. At night, shadows creep in fast around the corners of your vision and you struggle even to think. A hard flash erupts overhead. We don't have a picture of that yet. This is um still an alpha. A struggle lightning, but its brightness lasts for a few seconds. Several seconds. For a brief moment, you briefly see where you are, a city. Looming as if in daylight, you witness hills and dense buildings and walls beyond. The light fades, as do you. You drift away, and the last thing you hear is the dragon's muttering voice. Let's get out of this, sir. Okay. It's been a while since I've done this. Hope I still got the touch. I think I saw him move, sir. You both realize this counts for it's your tab, right? You stare to the voices, one of them recognize, one of them you recognize, the dragons and two others hovering just over your head. You were two out of the focus, but you can but you can as they as they speak, you begin to discern them. First one of the husky, husky boys who was in the menace tones. Second is further away. Lower, coarser, almost raspy. The first unknown voice mumbles something you don't quite catch. 
Then you feel a palm press to your chest. A jolt rushes through your body and the pain in your joints is washed away by a warm tingling wave. Energy fills your being and you go from barely conscious to stirring fullness. Your eyes flutter open, blurry shapes hover over you. You can make out the shiny gleam of the dragon. But your feet is a larger shape of gray and right over your head is you squint. A face slowly comes into view. A man. A well-cut beard holds his face, intelligent eyes staring into yours. A rope hangs loose over his shoulders, barely tied together by a rope around his waist. Behind is nothing but a bare chest full of hair, a strong body with just a hint of gut. He smiles. Looks like I'm still useful. That's not a man. Bear. Nice steps forward. Half ass. He's a fighter. The man laughs. I can tell. He's a random stranger you two hicked open the door for and threw on my table. Figure at your feet, grumbles. How'd you even find them, Gilbert? You were the focus on the complaining one. The details come to you slowly, but your eyes eventually piece together a brawny and wide figure with crossed arms. Sharp teeth, tall fin on his head, pierced for gold. For a split second, you think it's Orca, but his skin is gray, not black. Shark? You were close. He stared at you skeptically, bulging arms crossing his cool eyes, half lidded in boredom. His dress is far less formal than the other two, a little more than simple pants and a sleeveless vest. Done. The other one, well, the one caught Gilbert answers. Caught him in the act. Man of Storm made him think twice. Father Gustavo told me we should bring him here. Of course he did. Shark eyes. He gets to the rod, rolled man. You really couldn't think of any place else, Gustav? He tears the picture from you to the shark. The cleanest tavern in town, Karen. Karen? Yeah. That ain't saying much. Shark replies. You look back down to you. It brings a palm to your cheek, lightly tapping as you move your head. And he's coming too, my lad. He puts a hand on, under your shoulder. You gain the strength to rise, and he pushes you as you pull yourself upward. Up we go. You're sitting now, barely. Where your head feels like it's made of blood, your senses are at least back to normal. You're in a tavern, big and spacious, one kind of given over to the bar with countless glasses behind it, and the walls covered in trophies of giant fish and the steering wheels of mighty vessels. You're also completely naked. A blanket over your legs affords you some mild modesty, but there's nothing to hide the rest of you from the three men gathered around you. The rolled man raises his hand from your back. You sit up on your own strength now. You rub your head. You're your lad, the brightest timber. My head hurts, my back hurts, my soul hurts. Uh... Do my cell on my cell. Next off, you got wear a spear on your hands. Rob, old man comes next to you and lays a hand on your shoulder. It's best we not be strangers. He holds out a greeting hand. I'm Father Gustav, priest of the West Haven Chapel of Light. Take his hands slowly. His grip stronger than you expect. As you shake, he nods over to the night. That is Gilbert. He's a chapel guard. But a small smirk, he glances over to the shark. And the troublemaker over there is Karen Crane. Or I'll just say Kane. Your name your Kane. He owns this tavern. And the stone heart. He clarifies. Best damn tavern in West Haven. And you are. Name? Yeah, the name I gave. Pleased to meet you, Charlie. Right, Gustav replies. Surprised you recover so quick, even with my healing. You build a strong stuff, lad. It's a compliment you sure he means it, but it doesn't feel like it with your body feeling like wet clay. For you realize that you're falling backwards. You're caught at the last second by Father Gustav, and he slowly lowers you back onto the table. Whoa, well, lad. You step straight up at the ceiling. He enters your vision, strong jaw, crooked with concern. I think what you need is some rest. 
You say K. Tell our owner to sign for a moment, then let's all defeat his side. If I don't owe you a favor, fine. Let's get him upstairs. Three heavy grunts that go around the room as you fall into their arms. They hoist you off the table, and the last thing you feel is your arms dangling. Wake up in the small room in a cramped bed. Despite some lingering soreness, you're able to climb out of bed on your own strength. On the bed stand, you find a small note. Come downstairs when you're ready. Okay. You find a fresh set of folded clothes next to the note and a small stack of coins. You have them both. You carefully walk down the stairs. The gentle light in the windows tells you it's morning, and you see the shark behind the bar. He's currently very invested in cleaning a giant tankard. Pretend to not notice you as you sit on one of the stools. What type of table? Not a table three times. That's an appropriate response, right? He glances up from his polishing. Now right, you're awake then. He sits the tankard down. He regards you with a raised brow. Surprised you're up so early. Feared you'd be all day in the cot. The shrug, he picks up the tinker bag and resumes his cleaning. Argo saw that his church was well past the west gate and you'll run into it eventually. So he wanted to talk with you when you're up and about. You sit there expecting more. He glances up and shrugs. That's it. Ain't got nothing else. And then now you stand up and will make your way towards the door. Oh, one more thing. He calls out. You turn back. Or could you ran into Dunlin? So a power crew practically owns the docks. I wouldn't go that way unless you're looking for a fight. Lots of boys like to plunder whoever they can catch if you catch my drift. You do catch his drift. That's about the Stone Tavern. I mean, they changed the name for ages, but can't even bother. Picks up a new glass to play and glasses around the tavern. I must tell you, I was in the Navy for a while. Say it up, open this place once we were free men. Well, me and old mate of mine. Where is he? His gaze goes right through you. Gone. Navy? A grand Navy of Lidor. When that meant something. His eyes roll over some shadier carriages in the tavern. Roll the seas back when. Now it's just floating wood. And then the pirates smell blood and move right in. Don't end the rest of them. How about him then? Ain't you curious? He chuckles. I own the tavern, that's it. I get you drunk and if you cause trouble, I told you all on your ass. Our right, transaction ends there. Okay. Gotta go. Well, obviously I'm not gonna go to the docks. Alley, tavern, explore the city. That's our inventory, I assume. It's a map. It's not too crazy. I believe that dot in the top, very top, is um us. And oh, we have available quest and complete the quest. This is all a demo though, and this is an alpha. Um, so I'm gonna like stop it right here because I'm pretty sure there's not that much more content. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But um, this game is called Worldly Saviors. If you are curious about this game and you want to try it for yourself or yourselves, of course everything will be in the um description below for y'all to try it if not you enjoyed the video awesome if you didn't then sorry but then um, with that being said i'm gonna end it here so if y'all had a good day good your name better tomorrow and i will catch y'all next video